Welcome to The Football Show. I'm Peter Martin. Alan Roth and Tammy Manis are here with me on PLZ Soccer's YouTube channel. Thanks very much for joining us. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And if you hit the bell, you'll get all the notifications of our unique video content. There's lots to come on PLZ Soccer over the course of this season. I really do hope that you can uh, visit our website, uh, not forgetting our shop, and download the PLZ Soccer app as well. And that will keep you right up to date with all the breaking stories, uh, north, south of the border, European and world football. Uh, we've got it all here, and we've got two guys to offer an opinion that you might like uh, or you might dislike. That's what football's all about, roughly. The passion as the new season dawns. Yeah, and uh, I'm sure once the... We get underway at three o'clock or whatever time the teams are kicking off at. I mean, the fans will be desperate to get back to their work on the Monday and start talking about how, how the games have went and how their rivals have went as well. That's what the football's all about. Yeah, the great noise-ups will start. Um, I would like to see, there was a wee sniff, um, Tam, that uh, <clears throat> maybe the SFA and the SPFL could bring in VAR prior to uh, the World Cup. I certainly would like um, it to come in as early as possible. Yeah, I think we all would. I think that uh, we were all kind of taken aback that it was going to be, you know, taking that long. You know, at the start of the season, you want it for the full season. You know, I think that's fair to all clubs because there might be some decisions, like in the next couple of months, that VR, you know, would have changed or overruled, and then you go into, you know, December, January, and then those those same decisions, you know, for clubs that are that are overturned. So you might get a bad break here or there. So. I think that for everyone, I think the fairest way is to try and get it as, as soon as possible, even at the start of the season. Yeah, I would agree with that. But I think there's lots of things got have to go on behind the scenes. You like know, what? the referees, they have to be up, up to speed with what's happening. Well, we I saw, think they've been working at it tirelessly on test runs. Well, we saw the test runs that happened in England when they started and it was a mess, an absolute shambles. I hope they've enjoyed that. Do you not think the Scottish that. referees will gain from the benefit of the mistakes that have been made in England and consult with well, them? Well, we hope so. Yeah. Well, we really hope so, you know, because it would be embarrassing if uh, we had to start where England started with all these... No carry ons. I mean, every game, every every VAR was contested, and I hope that's not the case because we want it to run smoothly. Yeah, I, I can't, I can't wait for the first big call. Mm. In, uh, you know, a Rangers Celtic game. It'll just be incredible, Tom. There'll be mayhem. We valid people. Oh, is that what I get? Remember, you'll be able to use that. No, yeah. I, I, listen, I, I do genuinely think that uh, I think it's going to be great for the game here. I think it, it will eliminate a lot of the conspiracy theories yeah. about referees. You know, and uh, you can go and you can get decisions, you can get them, you know, overturned, you know, and get correct decisions. I hope you can get them quickly, Tam. That's going to be the problem, Ruffy was saying there. At the start down in England, uh, the Covid season or just before that, it was taking three, four minutes to get a decision. You yeah. know, and people didn't know what would come, they're going, you know, goals, offsides, you know, red cards. It's got to be quicker, it's got to be a minute, minute and a half, and then you can go on with the game. Yeah, absolutely. You can give us your thoughts on that. Would you like it to be in quicker? The other thing about VAR, which people will grasp very quickly, especially from the evidence of last season, is that it is not uh, going to eliminate mistakes completely um, because, quite simply, there's still a human element involved in the whole process um, and whether they go to VAR in the first instance. So, you know, there's still that element that's going to infuriate people, but um, I don't think you can completely and utterly take it out of the game without stopping it and you know literally treating football um, as a sport under a microscope and it'll take an eternity you'd be as well uh, getting the the buffy out get it in the back of the car <laughs> roughy and just tailgate like the americans do for their american football yeah i hope they've moved it on a bit i hope yeah. they've cut out the wee sort of a fingernail or the heel or something like that you know or on the line i hope, I hope yeah. they've moved Talking it on offside. Bit. The, the offside one, you know, I mean, it, we, we all want to see important part of football scoring goals and celebrating goals, so if they can tidy that up a wee bit and we, we get more goals, all the better. Yeah, Mark Fairfield says, I'm dreading VAR. It's going to be a disaster. M Mark, I, I hope... Um I hope you're wrong um, on this one. I, I don't think it's ab about being a disaster. I think it's about people slowly but surely embracing it and then seeing that it will reduce um, certainly a fair percentage of mistakes that are being made in our game. Uh, it certainly will <laughs> eliminate quite a few pub arguments along the way, but nevertheless, we shall wait and see, Mark. I, I hope you're wrong on this one. I hope we it's taking us in a better direction. It might not. It might be, where's that referee from? You know, we'll listen, you're going to get. I did say that last season, Tom. Whoever, <laughs> where's the VAR? Whoever, hut? Where is it? Whoever, whoever, whoever's, got, yeah, park kid. whoever's in that hut is oh, going to oh. be. Well, is he? You know, is he a Celtic VAR man or is he a Rangers VAR man? I mean, honestly, Certainly. 
he's what? It's Orkney he's coming from. Yeah, we'd need to stay up there, <laughs> um, actually, so that we wouldn't get any flack. Uh, just uh, as far as Scottish football is concerned, we're going to talk in detail about the response to it, <clears> uh, people getting out there, supporting it, um, how difficult it's going to be financially. But, Tom, this week, we could get a shot in the arm if somehow Motherwell can overturn that deficit against oh. Sligo, because Graham Alexander's mentioned that there's a, a need for calm, don't panic, the game's still alive. Well, Mother will need to show that they are alive and up for this one. Yeah, they do. Listen, it was a disappointing first leg, but it's only half time. I think Mother will benefit hugely from getting that game under their belt. Um, you know, they'll get into the game, you know, confident that they can overturn it. Sligo, you know, are sitting, I think, fourth or fifth in the, in the Irish League. They're 20, 25 games in the season. They're rock hard, you know, they're fit. You know, so it's going to be tough for, for Motherwell to go and overturn it, but I, I think they've got the quality to do that. But it's always difficult when you're starting the season so early. Can remember playing for Hibs, we played a team from Lithuania and uh, if we'd have played them, you know, eight or nine weeks later we'd have absolutely hammered them, but we'd beat two one in aggregate because we weren't ready, you know. So that's always the that's always the thing when you get into it's particularly against teams that are midway through their season and that's that's been a big advantage, I think, for Sligo. Yeah. Big bonus Van Veen has committed himself mm-hmm. and extended his deal. It, when he's on his game he can be a handful. Not I don't know if I'm being doing him a disservice here, Ruffy. I, I hope he really Scores a few goals for Motherwell. He's not quite a kind of our big mate who used no. to play up front. Um, the big Malt. scouser, the scouser, Malt. Louis Malt. Higdon. No, Louis Malt, Higdon. Louis, he's not a Louis no. Malt or a Higdon. No, um, no he, he does score spectacular goals. I thought it was very interesting. I'm coming out into the new the newspaper saying he had a gambling problem. I think maybe that was something he had to sort of uh, get out the road before he started playing. The kind of football that he thought. I mean, we all know that there are players going through that kind of problem. He's confronted it. Uh, he, they might get a better player because of that, and he's come out and uh, he sorted himself out. So he has so- scored some good goals. There's no doubt about that. But I mean, I know Motherwell saying don't panic. There will be panic if they get knocked out. I yeah. think there'll be a massive fallout. I, I don't think uh, the Motherwell manager has got enough bonus points to sort of hang on to for last year. I think we had Tam in the show quite a lot, saying a lot of supporters didn't know where they were going and what the manager was the right deal, so getting knocked out of this cup is going to put more pressure. Well, I, I read a start that Motherwell only won three or four games since Boxing Day. Yeah. You know, that's, that's incredible mm-hmm. when you think that the start of the season they had last year. Started really, really strong, the top of the league for a, a period, and then, uh, you know, three or four wins, I think, since Boxing Day, so the pressure is starting to mount a little bit on, on Graham. Yeah, I hate to I hate to kind of quote the old... Um, showbiz line but it's not how you start it's how you yeah, finish and I think yeah. Graham Alexander <coughs> wanted to emphasise that point and managers always want to you know put in into context mitigating circumstances of injuries and you name it but I, I genuinely I don't think it'll be under as much pressure if they lose to Sligo I think the biggest downer from that if they go out um, Tam is a sad indictment of our game we need to uh, work out ways to, to strengthen our league, bring more money into it and get to a situation where a Motherwell, a Hearts, a Hibs, an Aberdeen, a Dundee United can get into a grip stage because three million is going to be a kiss of life and three million to Hearts is going to make a huge difference with the the, the, the recruitment as you can see and the way they're going about their business now. Yeah, obviously they've got that guaranteed. They've got one playoff game, I think, to get into the Europa League group stages which would be more lucrative than the Conference League but even if they don't win that game are guaranteed, you know, the, the group stages of the Conference League. So you're right, three million pound gives Hearts a platform. They were the, the, by far the third best team last season. It gives them a real platform to go and really cement that and go and pull away from the rest of the teams and try and get closer to Celtic Rangers rather than looking behind them. So you're right, it, it'd be great for Scottish football if if Motherwell can come back and win that game because I said the other day I don't mind getting beat off of no disrespect, you know, I don't mind getting beat off a Croatian team or maybe a technically good Dutch team or somebody like that. Yeah. To get beat from a team from Ireland, you know, at this point, it's, it's pretty embarrassing. Yeah, absolutely. I thought they were woeful last week, um, and the header from Mugabe was just uh, amateurish, to say the least, um, and gifted them the win, um, and they never really looked back after that. Um, anyway, fingers crossed, Motherwell can turn it around. Um, it's, a bad, it's a bad state of affairs, Ruffy. When Tam was looking, uh, McManus was looking for, uh, Cowan was looking for somebody to come in here on Thursday, but he's decided to come in because he's not going to the away leg. <laughs> no, he was swithering, you know, and uh, it, and obviously he's a bit nervous about the game as well. He's got his wee, his wee camper van. He was hoping they'd go on a wee trip uh, somewhere. Yeah. Uh, but I don't think the, the Motherwell fans have got enough 
tickets for this game, and Tam will probably tell us, is, is it a wee stadium? It's a small Sligo. stadium, I think. I think, probably we, I think they only got 300 aye. tickets, and Tam, being Tam, said he would prefer one of the, the loyal supporters who don't get a chance to go to away games, and he offered his ticket for, for them. Yeah, Isaac has said something um, quite pertinent, and I, and I think Isaac <coughs> sponsorship bringing in money from all quarters uh, goes uh, hand in hand with the point that you're making. He said, uh, Peter, unless we get a decent TV deal, most of the league outside the top three will be planked. And I, I, I think Isaac's uh, right, Tam, because quite simply, while we are grateful um, that Sky Sports you know, are giving us uh, money for our game, it's not great money in comparison to other deals elsewhere across Europe. It is woeful. Um, but quite simply, we sold ourselves down the river um, going into deals with Satanta, putting them head to head against each other, not showing the loyalty. Um, and in the end, we suffered badly. Yeah, we did. Listen, you don't want to compare us to England, but you look at the money that they get and you know, that Sky give to English football. You know, it's a drop in the ocean compared to what Scottish football gets. And I think we've got to have a better product. And if we have a better product, you know, and teams are doing well in Europe and they're getting <clears> more attention, you might attract a bigger sponsor. And it's, you know, it goes hand in hand. You know, if you're getting pumped out with Irish teams, yeah. you know, who's going to come in and sponsor the league for big money? You know, no, nobody. So I think you've got to take the Sky deal, take the money now, and you've got, to, you've got to try and be better in Europe. You've got to try and create a team that can go and get into the group stages and that. Apart from Hearts, you know, it's going to be a struggle for Dundee United and for Muddle. Yeah, and, and if I was uh, a commercial person, Ruffy, and... And I can speak from experience, as you well know, because you were with me on this crusade. Um, I would not get to a situation where you're constantly playing this uh, one trade-off against another. When you're in a weakened position like Scottish football, I would look and say, OK, if you want a package, here is a package you can buy for commentary. This is it for commercial radio. Now, I know better than most in commercial radio, the minute um, the commercial radio teams lost commentary, it was just the monopoly of the BBC, which I don't think was healthy. Um, so you had only one station and you had to like it or lump it with them. Whereas if you had given a package out to other commercial radio stations, you would have had competition. You would have had promotion of the sponsorship. You could do the same with television packages, one for the BBC, maybe one for um, STV, maybe one for you know Sky Sports and Premier Sports and, and divvy them up, the highlights packages, but give Sky, if they're the biggest pair, the main, the main call on the on the on the live games. Yeah, I think it's un. I might be wrong here. I think it's unfortunate we signed that Sky deal when we didn't have the two teams at the top of their game. You know, because we all know Rangers and Celtic are the main ones who they want. You know, and we had a really successful team. Rangers weren't successful at that time, so maybe the package uh, wasn't as good as what we thought. But now we've got the two of them flying high. Yeah. You would think if you went to back to renegotiate that deal, you'd be saying, look look where Rangers are now, look where Celtic are now, they're in Europe, give us a better deal. And, and that might be the way ahead. Yeah, uh, and the other thing I was going to say to you, Ruffy, the reason why I'm speaking from experience is we had the rights yeah. for the commentary. And obviously it's a tough... It's a tough game, um, obviously trying to, to battle against the others when you, when you don't have the millions, but we enjoyed it. Yeah, we certainly did. Uh, you know, we, we did everything in our power, and as we all know, uh, every time we did something, other people pinched it. Our ideas. Yes, absolutely. Don't worry about that, Ruffy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it was worry, ridiculous. Ruffy. Some of the stuff was ridiculous. Uh, I, I get that, job. I know. Uh, but Ruffy, remember, by the way, um, if you've only got one idea in your head, there's a problem. Mm -hmm. We've got millions of ideas, Ruffy, don't worry. And and this year we're going to absolutely have a right go at it again. Are you, are you galvanised and yes, ready I for it? Yes, yeah. You must be excited at the plans I'm telling you about. Yes, I certainly am. Soccer. Yeah, yeah, but I'm really excited, you know. Obviously, Tam is going to be more involved at the weekends. So yeah. That'd be great, you know. Absolutely. If, if Tam can speak fluently, <laughs> then he'll do match reports. <laughs> oh, no. I'm troubling. <laughs> Absolutely. His first piece to camera. Uh, we must get it uh, on. I cannot uh, wait. Uh, one of our first, <laughs> one of our first, first uh, pieces to camera away was at Aberdeen. And I can't remember who it was. It was a gale force wind. And I don't know who it was, but they were about to read, read out the team. <laughs> the wind blew, blew the team lines away. <laughs> 
<laughs> so I've done so many occasions. You're worst nightmare. Um, but nevertheless, um, we hope you're going to follow us. We've got lots of uh, big plans coming this year. Uh, and if you're with us and you subscribe to our YouTube channel, you will see um, not only our opinions, hear our opinions on the game, but you'll get lots of opportunities to win some fabulous prizes as well and enjoy our coverage of Scottish football and beyond. Uh, and of course, we like to have a dig here and there and we like you to give it back to us. And Greg, John is certainly giving it back to me. He says, Peter, it's very lazy journalism um, on your part to just write off Aberdeen this season. Have you analysed any of their signings? Um, of course... Uh, I think Aberdeen will be good this year. Well... I'm fancying them. I'm well, fancying them to go well. Well, t t see, to be honest with you... Um, that's your opinion. Yep. Um, based on last year, you also fancied Aberdeen to go well with your mate Stephen Glass in place. And what happened to him? The point here, Greg, is I'm not writing off Aberdeen. I'm just, I, I, as you will see from our predictions from 1 to 12, I'm not writing off Aberdeen. You're but seventh. They had, they, last Jared year... You're the seventh, didn't you, in your predictor? Uh, uh, no, I think uh, might, sixth. maybe sixth. <laughs> but the point I'm about to make here, uh, and Greg might not agree to this, but last season, Tam... I was heavily critical of Aberdeen because I said their defence was woeful and I said they were playing players in positions that they shouldn't have been playing in. And the point I was making, and I made it you know, early on in the season, is come back to me and see how many players remain in that Aberdeen side at the start of this season because he will clear it out. I can remember saying it. He will clear out players that we've been critical of that should never have got a jersey for Aberdeen that just were not good enough and they got one manager the sack and suddenly now Jim Goodwin is about to offload David Bates mm. that well, back line well, is Bates good and Gallagher were the two were the two mainstays at the back and I think he had to, he, won't he's, be a brought, he's brought the, the captain of Wickham up who I think has made them, he's made them club captain Name escapes Stuart. me, Stuart, sorry, yep. and uh, I think I've seen him against Wraith Rovers, I think he's a decent player, looks like leader at the back, I think that's what they needed, a big centre half to go and head it and defend, and Miofsky up front, I thought looked excellent, scored the goal, got an assist, so they've also signed a striker from Benfica, so I think that they've, they're, they're, it's a totally different team now, and, yes. but I think they're going to play a different style for Stephen Glass, Stephen Glass wanted to get down and play you know, the perfect game, which is difficult, you need time to do that, but I think Jim will, will be more direct and he'll be more attacking and It'll be harder to beat. Ross McCrory started the season really well as well. So yeah. no, I think I think Aberdeen will be I think they'll be good this year. Quite yep. fancy them to go well. And again, by the time we offer our predictions, Ruffy, at the start of the season, even with quite an elongated window um, still ahead, there could be mm. some players coming in again that strengthen your or somebody goes out that weakens you. Um, it's all guesswork. Where they're going to end in the league? Yeah, yeah uh, Tam was Tam was super excited about Stephen Glass. Yeah. By the time we got past three, four games, we had Andrew Shiny on here. Remember, they beat somebody in Europe five one. Hacken. Hacken. They were absolutely doing cartwheels. Yeah. Uh, they were talking about them as if they were the Gothenburg greats. Yeah, but I, I think when you're at a team who have had a really, really bad season, and you see new players coming in, you see the results they've had. No disrespect to the teams they beat in the Premier Sports, but they're, they're nowhere near the quality they're going to hit at the weekend. Yeah. So I think the weekend is the, the chance to really assess you know, where they are and the players that they've brought in, because obviously they're going to park head and they, they usually get turned over there. So if they don't get turned over there, then people will say, well, maybe this is the year that they could be yeah. going for third again. Absolutely. Greg, I haven't written them off yet, but I certainly am not enthused. I like Jim <coughs> Goodwin. I think Jim Goodwin's a good manager, and I really hope that Dave Cormack um, backs him big time. We'll I, think, I think he's been backed. I think they've obviously brought in the two big fees as well. For Ramsey and Ferguson, yeah. so I think they have reinvested quite a bit of that into signing some players. Yeah, fingers crossed. We'll see if we get a good, strong Aberdeen who can actually, maybe on occasion, um, just put a dent in Celtic or Rangers in the league. Um, certainly, when I was a kid, that's what you fully expected Rangers and Celtic to be turned over by Aberdeen and Dundee United on a regular basis. Whether that will happen or not, who knows? Um, looks as if it's Legia or Warsaw um, that are the team closing in on David Bates. Um, is it, should you be criticised? I mean, Jim Goodwin's had to defend the signing of Liam Scales. Should you be criticised for taking mm -hmm. loan deals? Not at all. You know, I think it depends what kind of loan deal you get. I think this is a boy who came into the Celtic team and he had two or three games. You know, everybody was raving about him over in Ireland. You know, and he's came. So maybe you just need him a chance to get first team regular, first team football to to bring out the best in him. You know, so in Aberdeen, it's a very good side to go to. You know, and it's a good environment to be in. And 
at the end of the day, you know, if he goes back to Celtic, then they get a better player. Yeah, but he's been he's been supposedly he's been very good for for Aberdeen to start the season. Yeah. Skills they give them good balance as well. Yeah, absolutely. I, I'm not too sure sometimes. How many players do you? <laughs> I'm not going to go for that one. It's too early. I mean, how how. <laughs> I mean, I look at the players that the Celtic have signed. How many times do you get a loan player who goes out and loan? I'll give you one name. A player that went out and loan, and a lot of Celtic fans <coughs> had written him off and he Christy. came back. Um, and Christie. Well, Ryan Christie's one. I was thinking mm-hmm. more of the ultimate one, which was Callum McGregor, who's going to lift yeah. the trophy this yep. weekend. Yep. Um, Callum McGregor, Notts County. Notts County, and he was yeah. scoring goals, and they wanted to sign him. Mm-hmm. And Celtic said, no, he's, com- he's coming back. No, I, mean, I think it's, I think you're, when you're at Celtic and Rangers and you're not getting a game, I think you've got to look to go and loan somewhere. You yeah. know, and is that a Mikey Johnson dilemma? Yeah, Mikey Johnson, for me, is, he's got to go out and play somewhere. He, can't, he, he, he just can't be in and out. He's, he's in for one game, he's out for five or six. He's not getting a chance, you know, any continuity. He goes, he plays every week for Motherwell, St Mern, Hibs. You know, he goes and plays every week somewhere and he gets his confidence up. Yeah. You know, it's no use. And he, he, you don't want to drop down to the Celtic B team, you're playing with kids. You know, and you're an established first team player, so you've got to get yourself out and play. Derek yeah, Smith makes a good point there. He says Aberdeen didn't complain when they dried Christie on. Aye, aye. Yeah. Yeah. Brian Christie was excellent for them. I, yeah. I think we boy Mickey Johnson's got something. So I like him as well. Do. I think I like he's him. got. I see him coming on, and, and for thirty minutes, forty-five minutes, he's got a trick that other people haven't got. If I was Aberdeen or Hibs, mm-hmm. I, I yeah. would be knocking yeah. the door, going, "Don't let him go down to England. Keep him up here because he's an entertainer." Yeah, he's got, he's, got to work his, he's got to work on his final product. Yeah. his end product. Yeah. That's the yeah. big thing that lets well, him down because he's, he can take players on for fun. He's got good pace. His final product for me is something he's got to, he's got to work on continuously to get better. Said, but I think he's had injuries. I think he's had injuries. Yeah. See before, see before he had the big injury, that boy people were looking and thinking he could be a regular starter. And then all of a and sudden, Neil Lennon really liked him. Yeah, yeah. Liked you, him. you know yourself, you know, if you're sitting on the bench, you know, for four or five months, how, you're not getting a game. No, no, no particularly you. you know, no particularly you. But if you're sitting you're on the bench, right. if you're sitting on the bench, no, I'm saying if you're sitting on the bench. For three months and not getting a game, and all of a sudden the manager says, "Right, go and get your gear off and yeah. go and impress." The, the pressure's on you, oh, right away. Aye, yeah. And particularly Especially if you're at Celtic, aye. you know you've got to go on and really turn it on. So I think the best bet for him would be an Aberdeen or Hibs. Yeah, and and Gallant says here, you all said the same about Ralston, and he eventually came good for Celtic. Yeah, yeah listen, you, you never been a bigger turnaround than a long time. Ralston, no, Celtic you, fans were, were chasing him at the door. You can't be definitive on these things, um, and and Hugh Scott. Um, just has to has just highlighted that as well with t- Tony Ralston on the way out and then comes back. Yeah, listen, that's that's the that's the making. It depends on how a player actually reacts to it and how they can mm-hmm. um, you know look at it as an opportunity to get themselves back playing regularly and then come back to prove a point. Who knows? Um, but nevertheless, uh, we'll see how Aberdeen are going to do. Um, we we'll looked at Mikey Johnson and obviously the potential for him to go out where he would go I don't know I hope it's a Scottish club so do I, I don't know. want him to go out somewhere else I, no. I want him to stay here you don't want him to go down south you know and then you lose them you know I mean they don't yeah. lose ourselves because but we lose contact with them we all want it'd be great if the Jambos got him wouldn't it I mean that they would really be really dangerous yeah well they've they go. not got that kind of player <laughs> <laughs> I just said that to annoy you anyway it would be, it's a thing <laughs> It's the type of player that Hibs should be going for. Oh, I'd take him at Hibs and Mora. Mm-hmm. Take, I'd put Mikey Johnson at Hibs and Mora. I think you go, into, I think you go into the team and gives you, gives you Imagine pace. Imagine McGeady in one end and Mikey Johnson on the it'd other. Great, it'd be great to watch. You know, Hibs have signed you know a lad Jair, a Portuguese lad who's a, who's a wide man as well. So don't know where he's fit in at Hibs, but I'd take him. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks to Cheryl, our journalist, who has said of the eight players Aberdeen signed on permanent deals last summer, only two of them remain. Marley Watkins and Christian Ramirez. Well, Ramirez looks as if he's heading back to America. He's already out there saying his family haven't settled and I, I blah, think, blah, blah, blah. I don't blah, think he'll be there too much. Yeah, That's why they signed the boy Miofsky. I think yeah. he'll be, your, he'll be their, your number nine. Yeah, mm. well, there you are. Um, <clears throat> so it'll only be one player. But we'll see. We'll wait and see how Aberdeen fare. Uh, you can give us your view on that as well. Here's the, uh, here's the fixtures as we get ready. It's Wednesday, two days of press conferences and all the promises in the world. Livingston Rangers kicks off at 12 o'clock on the Saturday. St Johnson against Hibbs. Kilmarnock against Dundee United, Hearts against Ross County, 
and then on the uh, Sunday it's St Mirren Motherwell with a three o'clock and then at half past four Celtic against Aberdeen is the unfurling of the flag. Callum McGregor will be there as captain lifting the trophy. It'll be a great day for him and his family. A thoroughly decent boy. I thought he was the best midfielder in Scotland by far last season, Tam. Um, and I still stand by it. Yeah, I think consistently over the over the course of the season. You know, I know Kamara you know, was in and out of the team. Aribo started the season really well. But I think for, for consistency of performance over the full season, and his leadership qualities, I think that you're right. I think Cal McGregor was, was the best midfield player in Scotland. He, just, he seems to be getting better. You know, since Scott Brown left, you know, Callum's had to take over that mantle. He's a totally different captain. You know, and Scott Brown was a snarling presence in the middle of the pitch who used his physicality. I think Callum McGregor leads more by his performance than by his, his, his example. Yeah, and, and I think the other good thing about this season, Ruffy, that I'm really looking forward to is um, I like the signings that Rangers have made. Um, you know, they've held on to some players that maybe uh, raised an eyebrow with some that thought they were on their way out. I mean, Steve Davis, uh, still there. I like Steve Davis. I think he's a brilliant, neat and tidy, very experienced midfielder. McGregor's still there. Who do you think is going to be number one casting your eye as a former goalkeeper? Well, uh, there has to be something behind the scenes why he's not playing every game. You know, I don't know whether it's he picks up injuries or whatever. You know, Alan McGregor's got to be first choice, you know, but the, the, there must be a reason why he plays them maybe three out of four or whatever it is. So, you know, and he, he's getting on, you know, maybe he is picking up uh, injuries that he, he wasn't picking up before. And if you want to pick and choose and you want to pick them for the big games, you've got a big game player. So, so why wouldn't you do that? Yeah, a lot of Rangers fans have been critical of the fact that there was some major blunders um, from McGregor last season. Not too many of them, but significant ones. Yeah, I, th I think he, he did make a few, you know, but you, you expect that from a goalkeeper. You know, you're going to make mistakes and yeah. unfortunately, Ruffy knows if you make a mistake as a goalkeeper. <laughs> If you make a mistake as a goalkeeper, it results in a goal. It's not as if it's a midfield player or a defender. Yeah. If a goalkeeper you make a mistake, particularly a high profile one, if you're a Celtic Rangers goalkeeper, then you are you're, you're gonna you're gonna get slaughtered for it. And the, the Rangers fans did, you know, have a go at him at times, but for me he's still number one. I think he's still the best goalkeeper that Rangers have got in the building and you know, I think he can still go for another year or two. Yeah, and I think one of the reasons that he is number one is because the four he's got in front of them are number one. You know, it's always somebody, I don't know who was it, said you, the goalkeepers are only good as the four you've got in front of you. And the four he's got in front of him at Rangers have been particularly good, you know, last year, right through the league and into Europe as well. Yeah. Also options now um, in the positions. We looked at it the other day there on the strength in various positions that they've got. I, I mean, I, I presume will be boosted by the fact that Nikola Katic has come back and said his agent says he's going nowhere, so he's going to want to fight for a position. Yeah, I, I don't see where he quite fits in, you know, at Rangers, to be honest. I think Rangers have got plenty of cover at a centre-half position. Um, you know, I don't see Katic rubbers out and loan, you know, whether he comes back in and, and he's part of the first team, I'm not so sure. I think they'll get them fit in Rangers and maybe try and sell them and get some, some fees for them and try and strengthen elsewhere. But I think Lawrence, you know, I think he's he could be a key player, you know, coming up from Derby County, midfielder that can get past the striker, get into the box, score goals. Uh, he's already done that in pre-season, so I think he could be a really big player for Rangers. He's somebody that Arfield can do that. You know, he, he was at his prime, you know, maybe a couple of years ago, maybe Scotty is just going to be like a Steve Davis type, you know, coming in and out of the team. But I think Lawrence could cement himself in that centre midfield player and be that guy who can get you a 10-15 goals in midfield. Yeah, um, we'll be offering <clears> our opinion. You can give us your opinion on who you think is going to win the league, who's going to win the Cups, also the position of your favourite team in the league. If you think um, that uh, it's going to be a good season and you're going to be looking towards Europe, then by all means, give us your opinion on that. That's what the whole programme survives on. You interacting with us, we'll be giving you opportunities throughout the season, not only to offer your opinion, but to get involved and win some competitions, pick up some prizes. We're going to have a lot of fun as well as uh, bringing on some very special guests for you. And we'll get Ruffy and Tam out there doing uh, uh, other sports as well. We'll have a bit of fun with them too. Um, and later on in the season, uh, as it moves on, we've got some really big plans and uh, we'll see Tam taking on some other roles, uh, Ruffy, which I think is fantastic. Think Going out to games for us as well and being able to offer an opinion um, without being yeah. played by club TV. He's going he's to be unleashed. Up. He's going to become <coughs> more... Have you seen my daily record column uh, during the week? Yeah, oh, you're writing for the daily record yeah. now. Um, uh, now the... <laughs> 
<laughs> See, uh, we're not quite. I don't. I don't know if he's quite in the Chris Sutton mould yet, but he's getting no, there. No, no, yeah. we that Monday. Was it Monday? Mm. Monday. Monday was quite hitting. Yeah. You know, hard hitting. Yeah, hard hitting. Yeah, just yep, absolutely. Forcing, there's no way Hibs anymore. I'd be getting a phone call. <laughs> <laughs> Another one. I'm sure you'll get a phone call anyway. Uh, so you can offer us your opinion on uh, your favourite team or any of the burning issues in Scottish football. Uh, if you don't want to miss the show on a regular basis, we'd love to have you on board uh, by committing to our YouTube channel. Hit the subscribe button, hit the bell, and you'll get all the notifications. If you download the PLZ Soccer app, you'll get all the breaking stories. And you can watch the show live on your phone as well. Doesn't get any better than that, Ruffy. You just quite simply click in there, get onto the football show, uh, and would you believe it? Uh, as soon as you do that, you'll see us coming up on uh, your channel right there. It's it's as simple yep. as that. On your phone, Ruffy. That is, that is good. You know, and I, in HD, Ruffy. Yep. You look fantastic. I thought the news. I think the the day to day news, the breaking news, and and football was kept me going on holiday. You know, and I think that's important for most supporters. Yeah, absolutely. And our reporter, Kerry Pollock, will be out there. And we've got some new additions, new faces coming along as well. So uh, I can't tell you any more than that. It's it's going to be a great season. We're really excited about it. Um, I wonder if St. Johnston fans are excited about their season. Um, they've added Remy Matthews and Alec Mitchell on one-year deals. Crystal Palace goalkeepers won. Um, and also a defender uh, in Alex Mitchell. So clearly they're going to try and, and make themselves uh, difficult to beat this season. It was something that uh, you always associated with St Johnston. Callum Davis is certainly looking to strengthen the squad. Um, one of his players, Cammy McPherson, was saying today, last season just wasn't good enough. Uh, well, the new boys have settled in really well, to be honest, because it's a good bunch that uh, the gaffers brought in settled in fine and then on last season obviously we were really disappointed it ended well but it wasn't wasn't the season we wanted so we want to put that right this year I think that's a priority they've got to put it right this year even alone I think, I think most of us are tipping them to go yeah I think they're going to struggle this season you know I've seen that some of the players that they've brought in and I think they're decent players squad players but I don't think anybody really improves their team their starting lineup. I don't think they've got that goal scorer that's going to, which they've struggled with over the last couple of seasons. But as you said <coughs> earlier, they've always been hard to beat. They'd win one nothing. You know, they go away from home, they'd nick a point. You know, didn't do that at all last season. They were they were quite leaky at the back. So, I think they're going to struggle uh, this season. Cue them beating Hibs for nothing on Saturday. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, that, I, I fear for them, Ruffy. Yeah. Uh, the only thing that I think. Um, to be fair to Callum Davison from the season where they won the double, is they, they were a team that were built with a solid foundation at the back. Uh, Xander Clark was superb. The back four, uh, you know, eventually was cherry-picked, but it, it was solid. But the, the, the team was banked with experience and, and guys who'd been there for four or five years. And that lasts for two or three, you know, and then they all start drifting away. Or they get picked up by other clubs. They lost two really important players at the beginning of last season. Jason Kerr and Ali McCann. Yeah, they mm. lost them. You know, they haven't done that this year. But that Rooney, should, that should be, this year. Well, that should be a lesson, you know. That, But I, I, I agree. I, I think they will be bottom six most of the season. Yeah, I'll tell you one guy, we were talking about um, players <clears> that deserve testimonials. Uh, we were discussing Gary Locke the other day there. Locke, he was a great lad for Hearts. Uh, Murray Davis is going to get a testimonial yeah. after the lockdown, you know, put it back on the back burner. Um, but he's going to get one, and I think Murray Davis, and you just always associate um, injuries curtailed his career, or I thought he was going to get a big move. He was very close yeah, to signing for Rangers, Rangers at one point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, was, he was heavily linked to Rangers for for ages. You know, never quite got that. You know, when Rangers were obviously coming back up through leagues again, I think they were they were they were wanting to get Murray Davis, and I think he's been a terrific servant for St. Johnson over the years. Um, he said he's missed. A, I think he's missed a final or two with injury, but he, he's he's obviously picked up a lot of injuries. But I think he's, he'll have a three the three winners medals in his cabinet. Like Scottish Cup, two Scottish Cups, and a League Cup. So yeah. don't think there's many players in the St Johnson jersey that can boast that. I mean, it's fantastic when you think about it. Isn't Brilliant. It? Some of the St Johnson players won the Scottish Cup under Tommy Wright. So that 2013, maybe 2014, and then obviously the double. Uh, in the COVID season, you know, for St Johnson, played with three winners' medals. Yeah, yeah phenomenal. Absolutely. I think he missed playing in one of he them, did, but, he, but he gets a medal anyway. Yeah, yeah but I hope he gets a decent game. I've been disappointed with the testimonials, the, the actual games, not what goes on behind the golf do's and the dinners. Yeah, they're always good. I, I find it really 
shocking that a player like him gets a testimonial game. There's three thousand at it. I know well, it has to be. It has to be. We, but you need, it's, it's all about who you can attract. When I was at Dunfermline, uh, Scott Thompson, Nipper, yes. uh, Nipper was there for the years, and he got Man United up. And Alec Ferguson wanting to see the team he sent up, yeah. and there was a full house at East End. Yeah. I remember that were coming up with his wife and going, "Oh, Kerching, mm. uh, <laughs> Ronaldo, Vidic, uh, yeah. Scholes, Giggs, they all played Rooney. Yeah, brought them all up, and there was a full house. So if you can attract a big club like that, I know it's difficult. Mm. You know, they want fees and all that now, and it's, it's maybe changed a wee bit. But if you can get a big club, then you're, you're going to fill the stadium. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. That's I the thing. Fortune had Celtic. Well, Celtic I was going to say to you, Ruffy, it so many, many was there. I had a Celtic eleven versus a Scotland eleven. Many was it? Many was there. Who did you play for? Fifteen thousand seven hundred and twenty-four. Yeah, I counted them. Yeah, I, the <laughs> I think yours, yours, is, yours is the only testimonial where yeah. you were also, you were actually on the turnstile. We actually, we were actually <laughs> Celtic, Celtic sent up uh, some of the young boys. I'm trying to remember who David Problem was in it. He, David had been young at the team, and yep. Danny Craney and all them. And I had the, I brought up the Scottish boys the day before stupidly. John Robertson, John Wark, Gandhi Gray, they, they all come up and I put them in a hotel in the night. <laughs> <laughs> they, they sneaked out as, as you would do because it's only a testimonial. And uh, I went to get them, rouse them for the game, but they were obviously not 100%. And, <laughs> and Celtic were winning. Celtic were winning 8 3 with about seven minutes to go. And the referee came up to me and he said, uh, We've had uh, a couple of fans are running onto the park. What do you want me to do? And I mean, I'm just finishing there. I don't care. Just <laughs> I've got, stop the game. I've got stop the, the game. fifteen thousand. As long as you get your cash, <laughs> oh, brilliant. Uh, eight three magic. Anyway, apart from anything else, uh, well done to Murray Davis. Hope he has a great night. I agree with you, Ruffy. I'd love to see a big crowd up there enjoying um, not only the game, but if they can attract a half decent team, that'd be great. Um, players uh, hanging up their boots. Christoph Bera has announced that he's going to hang up his boots before the start of the season. He was at Wraith Rovers at the tail end. Um, yeah, I watched the game on Sunday and uh, I didn't think he was going to chuck it, but he did get a hard time from <laughs> uh, from Aberdeen. I think he's maybe just thought, thought to himself, you know, I'm not doing myself any favours now. When you get to that stage in your career, you think, you know, your legs have gone, you're done, you're no, you know, you're, you're kind of not stealing a wage, but you're, you're, it's not your level yeah. you should be playing at. And uh, Christoph's had a brilliant career, you know, went down to, down to England, brilliant for Wales, plenty of Scotland caps. You know, a real leader played against. Yep, played against him uh, at Hearts a few times. Very solid defender, had pace. Was was pretty quick in, his, uh, quick in his younger days. Lost that the yard or two, when he's, and I think that's maybe his decisions been made for him. And he's had, you lose your pace when you're quick. So, no, he, he can be proud of his career. He had a really really good career, and I, I wish him all the best. Yeah, um, there's been a release from the SPFL. Just a little statement um, from Neil Doncaster. As everybody looks forward to the start of the season, I think he's mentioned, obviously looking at what's happening down south, Robbie, uh, last season there's a fair few pitch invasions, uh, individuals yeah. and collectively a number of fans going onto the pitch. Um, and with that in mind, you know, the SPFL are quick to point out that the clubs in Scotland have invested heavily in CCTV systems, stewarding and policing. Uh, and the vast majority of fans do behave themselves, but you've got to be aware um, that although there might be some games, controversy, excitement, um, obviously disappointment, the last thing you have to do is go on that park. It could lead mm. to, as it has before, in lifetime bans for some fans. Yeah, and uh, fortunately or not, maybe not fortunately, it seems to be at the sort of a lesser grounds in the league, you know, at Ross County in particular, I think of them, Motherwell down the bottom corner. And, and I think it's up to clubs to identify the areas where they have young kids who do get a bit excited, that that's where the security go. You know, there's no point in having the security splattered all over the place when you know that's the area that's going to cause you trouble. Yeah. So I think these kind of clubs should identify where the trouble's going to be and, and, and sort it out. You get that for the Thistle Ultras as well? If no, we're not. very well behaved. We're yeah. very well behaved up the, up the back of the yeah. John Lambie. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Um, sushi, your sushi and your... Uh, yeah. Sushi, yeah. That reminds me... See, see, but, I mean, we, we spoke about this the other day and I never think. Before COVID came, we were going to have a standing area. And uh, for 250 people. And why is that not happening? Well, finances, obviously. 
Aye, because you don't want to put those the seats in well, the special Well, it would cost seat. too much now. It would yeah. cost too much, you know. Wow. If we'd have been given the half a million that everybody else got, we'd have probably did it. Yeah, know. OK. Um, Still got that chip. Can I absolutely, by the way. He uses this platform <laughs> to do it all the time. Um, no, I, and I the jazz band as well, before yeah. the game. As you were talking them. about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, rather, that'd be great. That would drag them in, wouldn't it? Oh. Um, anyway, apart from anything else, on that, I, <laughs> so we're well behaved. <laughs> which reminds me yeah, of... We are soya milk, cappuccinos oh, and all that. No, no, no. I remember... Well, in that Jackie Husband stand, that's where the commentators used to go. And I'll never forget me and Derek <laughs> Johnston in there for Radio Clyde were commentating on a game. And I said to him, I said to him, Derek, uh, you're on fire. And he went, Oh, thanks very much. I went, No, no, you're on fire. The guy's just flicked, the guy's just flicked a cigarette in your hair. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brilliant. Big DJ. I'll never forget it. Uh, anyway, but no, they are normally well behaved. There's a lot of good uh, banter with the party Thistle fans. Um, hopefully, you can get out to a match. I really do hope we get a huge um, response from supporters to get out to a game. If you can't get out to a game, then of course, don't forget to follow our social media outlets. We'll keep you up to date with all the matches and of course we'll have some uh, uh, match reports from the the games in the Scottish Premiership and we'll uh, cover all the stories on the app as well for down south when the Premier League in England starts too. Um, Just one little player that I forgot to mention and I noticed somebody mentioned it in the feed there and I just cannot believe it. What's happening with Lee Griffiths? I mean, who can somehow get something out of that boy um, before his career is completely wasted. I think it's almost wasted in my mind, but, it, it, I mean, he's training at Livingston. I can't believe at 31, Tam. Yeah. Um, listen, I think he's, he's had a lot of chances. Um, he went to Falkirk last season. Didn't quite work out for him in League One, so you're thinking, well, where does he go for there? Um, he's in training at Livingston. I know the wee fitness guy, wee Cheb Sproul at Livingston, who will be putting him through his paces, so he'll be fit. I think the, the, the most important thing for Lee Griffiths is to get himself in shape, get himself fit, and then the rest will take care of itself. I don't think he's been fit enough for the last two or three seasons. You know, whether it was at Celtic, you know, and he went out, out and loan, he, he went, went to Falkirk. He's not been fit enough to play 90 minutes consistently, and he's got to get himself in shape. I know he's got a personal trainer. I read, I read a couple of articles. He's, he's training hard. He's got a personal trainer. He's in training with Livingston. If his head's right, if he's, if he's fit, then he can still do a job in the Championship without question in Scotland. The championship. The championship was I, I think at 31 years of age, if Lee Griffiths was fit, a bottom six side in Scotland would look and think, get, what, mm. you know, you know you've had them before, Ruffy. You, you get an incentive, we'll pay you for every game you play, you get that, that payment, mm-hmm. you know, a game by game basis. He, if he could, you know, he's a goal scorer, yeah. natural. But unfortunately, for many, this every year, but I know, I for many people, yeah. he's a waster. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I think Tam summed it up. Uh, I think he's he's burnt his bridges a wee bit. You know, if any club was thinking of taking him here, they would phone up the places that he's been, and I don't think there would be a good report. You know, we all know he can score goals, but the report would be this or that or whatever. I I, I really think it's the time now where he gets out of this country. I think he'd maybe go to Australia, something like that, maybe America, you know, something just to get away from the environment that he's in. Because we all know he can score goals, you know, and Australia seems to be the place that a lot of people do go and find themselves. I mean, we're taking a fair and in, in put uh, Australians, aren't we? Well, I don't know if you read in the papers the other day there, Robbie, you'll be well aware of it at Thistle and every other club in Scotland. Because of Brexit, now everybody has to go through that process mm. that players out with the European Union had to go through is, you know, are you um, okay, eligible yeah, enough to, yeah. and good enough to come into this country? And play football. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I think going to Australia, you know, we've got a, a few guys over there in Australia who know who he is and what he can do, and, and it might be just a, a breath of fresh air that he goes there and, and hits it off. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing fans out there. I'll tell you what they do respond to every summer, and I did it when I was a kid myself, uh, Tam, uh, when the new strips come out. Um, mm. Everybody hopes that there's going to be a good design. Um, and. <laughs> I'm not just sucking off because he's built it me early on, but Aberdeen's strip is a good strip because it's a retro <laughs> one. It goes back to the great Gothenburg side, you know. Yep. It, it does have that feel about it. Yeah, no, it's a quite a nice strip. Um, I like the hip strip as well, the, the mint one, the away strip is quite nice as well. Uh, I'm trying to think, Livingston. 
Let me snug him back to the retro one. Yes, yeah, sorry, so sure. I'm not yep. quite so sure of the collar. Yeah, but I like that. I like the the design. It's a nice strip as well, Livingston. Yeah. Um, Motherwell will always get good strips. So, no, as I said, we'll probably talk about it. You know, it's just the pricing. You know how they yeah. price it to, to attract. You know, for if you've got a family, a couple of kids, you know, it's a real big mm. expense now to buy strips. Well, just just for the top alone. Never mind the shorts and the socks. I don't know about you, but uh, when we were young, you used to get the full strip, didn't you? Did you? I used to get the full strip. Oh, wow. did you, Ruffy? I would get the shorts and the socks. I got the top. I, mean, I don't think you could get the shorts and the socks as well. You. Not, really not sure. in a family of ten. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You'll be getting one soak each. <laughs> you not give me that soak, that's my tub. <laughs> I, I looked at him there and I thought, he's going to agree with me, but no. Uh, no, no danger, you wanted the top. Aberdeen's is 55 quid, 65 for Celtics, 55 for Dundee United's, Hearts is 52, Hibs is 55. Um, Kelly's fifty pounds. Livingston's forty-five. As is Motherwell's. Uh, Rangers uh, top is sixty-five. Um, Ross County's forty-eight. Uh, St Johnston fifty-eight and St Mirren a forty-seven. So the most expensive strip in there is Rangers at sixty-five, along with Celtic. Um, and the I think the cheapest one is St Mirren and uh, Livingston at forty-five with Motherwell. So it's. Maybe twenty quid of a difference, top end, bottom end of the of the Premiership, but still a hefty, hefty yeah. fee when you consider. I want, I would love to see the figures based on a cup five seasons ago to now with the, the financial constraints mm-hmm. that are in place. No, I think if, if you're a supporter and you go to games, you you've got to have the modern strip. I know a lot of people like wearing the retro ones. For, it's quite popular, you know, yeah. thing being that. But if you've got a, a, a pristine new strip yeah. and you're a kid, you you want your parents to say. Dad, can I get that? Yeah. Uh, Stuart Ramsey says, Peter, don't mention socks. They've been giving me pelters. I forgot to pull my trousers down, yeah. um, uh, just down there, and my socks have come out, and they're they're a wee bit colourful, Ruffy, aren't they? Yeah, they're sort of a wizard of Ozzy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're mental um, but people are giving me pelters from it's amazing Tam how many people over the course of the year who watch the programme not the podcast people because they just uh, listen uh, for the for the chat but the podcast if you wear if you wear anything on the YouTube uh, they're on you in a minute yeah. if, you've, if your gear's minging mm. they're all over you yeah, and Ruffy's persistent he's Sketchers, trainers, they which you, they, you, they, they are, are, they, they, they are, they are done. done. They're done. They're done. Ruffy, they're done. you're you're, you're mint it. Get yourself yeah. a new pair of sketchers. Well, I'm I'm honest with you, do you know what you should do with them? Those old sketchers. <clears throat> if you put them in the washing machine and wash them, yeah. and then you just put them on a, a white background, get them onto vinted, and <laughs> sell uh, them. Yeah. Sell yeah, them. Yeah, when you wash yeah. them, they shrink a half a size, and then you're walking about as if you get so feet. Is that what happened to you with your underpants as well? There you are. A great insight from Ruffy. Um, and uh, so DPG says, Peter, who is the Wizard of Oz? Um, uh, anyway, apart from anything else, um, strips are expensive. Um, some people can afford the socks. Uh, some people can't. Some people will make a decision. I'm just going to stick with last year's strip. Um, you can give us your view on that. <coughs> um, also, uh, just before we go, guys, a couple of things that I want to uh, draw to your attention. I, I, it would be remiss of me not to mention last night, uh, Tam, because mm-hmm. I sat down. I mean, I love watching football. I like English football as well. I thought the Lionesses, the England women's team, were absolutely superb. I mean, it was a great game to watch. And for me, I love people with skill, a wee bit of the outrageous, and the <clears throat> girl Alessia Russo mm. produced the a back goal. Kill. It was just outrageous. It was brilliant. It was. It was a great goal. You know, you thought she'd taken it too far, and she just, you know, pulls the little backwards Rabona uh, and flicks it by the goalkeeper. Great goal. England look like strong favourites now uh, to go and win it all. Uh, they're at home. The supporter right behind them. Yeah. And that can be a, a real powerful thing. So uh, it looks as if England does. Who's who's there to Germany and France? Germany or France? Yeah. So right. that's the only that's the only hope for us, isn't it? Germany and France now. Yeah, well, you're talking to two, uh, <laughs> Peter, <laughs> Peter Wolfgang Martin. <laughs> Rem, Remy Ruff. <laughs> no, I mean, and I'm just old school. I'd, I'd, I hate saying this because you annoy people, you know, when you say you, yeah. you don't want England to win. But uh, Does that just really the bother way you, Ruffy? Yeah, and not particularly with the women. Because I don't think the women yeah. would rub it. You're a bit like my brothers. They're like that. They yeah. wanted anybody. I just, thought, I just thought, like through the years, way back, I go way back. The the not the players themselves, but the media and the commentators and stuff. Yeah. Go, they yeah. just rub it into 
everything that they have done and what we haven't done. Yeah. You know? Well, one of the things I was thinking about last night, and this is relevant to everybody here who, who watches our programme and, and loves uh, Scottish football and wants, uh, basically, you know, wants us to do well as a nation. Individually, clubs in Europe, Rangers were flying the flag brilliantly last year. Um I, I want to see the men's game. I want to see the, the teams get into the latter stages or even at least the group stages of European football. We want to see that. I want to see the opportunity for women's football up here, but there's not there's not as much money, but there are clubs now investing in making professional contracts there for, for women. So there's a pathway and the game will get better and better when you get a situation where the Scottish team can qualify for a major tournament. That lifts everybody. And I really want to see our country, you know, in a situation where we can invest in sports and continually invest and continually invest in our people, uh, Tam, so that we can share the joy that was there evident last night on the programme. Um, when I was watching it, when they when they won that match, you know, everybody was just lifted by it. Yeah, if you're a, a young girl and you're yeah. at the game or you're watching it on the TV. Yeah. These players are heroes to you, you know. They're, they're in the spotlight now. They're you know, live every game on BBC or ITV, and you're watching these. You know, these girls are. You know, they're, they're looking up to them. I think they're they're superstars and encourages them to get involved in so in foot, soccer and football, and uh, that can only be good. Yeah, absolutely. It was a fantastic game, and I, I thought England thoroughly deserved their win. Some great goals. Poor goalkeeping, Roppy, from from the Swedish goalkeeper. To be honest with you, yeah, that's, 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 I, I, that's spoken to a few people. You know, at the women's football, and the goalkeeping seems to be, you know, a, a position that they haven't really sorted yet. You know, I don't know. I mean, if you look at the modern day there are men's some good football, yeah, they're all six foot four, six foot five. Yeah, no, they're big. They're, the, the men's football, so I think it's a height thing more than anything else, you know, but uh, I'm sure they'll get better uh, as the years go on. But I, I think now that the the sponsorship they're getting now and everything, you know, it's and as Tam said, every wee girl will have a hero. Mm. You know, we, the boys used to go out and buy Ronaldo and Messi strips. I'm sure the girls will be going out and buying the strips for the England team. And I, I would like to think the Scotland team as well. I mean, we've got players... And the Scotland team now are playing for Arsenal, they're playing for Man City. Yeah, Caroline Weir. Carl, they're playing abroad. So they, they, they should be icons for the, the girls, you know, who want to take up professional f football. Yeah, absolutely. Anyway, apart from anything else, there's nothing wrong with having a pride in your nation. Um, uh, that's one thing. The last thing I'm going to, I'm asking for your honesty here, Tam, on this. Um, somebody sent me a picture, um, our um, digital journalist Cheryl sent us the picture of the rules in place. Um, for uh, Aston Villa, um, for the players, <laughs> for this year, for the fines, club fines. I don't know how many you picked up or how, how many you picked up, Ruffy, um, but if you're late for training, 500 quid, which yeah. is a hefty sum if you think about it. Um, yeah, they're unfortunate. If, yeah. you, if you forget your GPS, pff, that wasn't there in your day, Ruffy, um, 100 pounds. Um, and of course, uh, the uh, late out onto the training pitch, two hundred pounds. A thousand pounds if you're late for a meeting with, um, late for a meeting uh, with the coach on match day. A thousand pounds, um, and also. Uh, there's various other things here. Illegal parking at the ground, a hundred quid. Um, so the players are looking at this list at Aston Villa, booked for descent, £200. If you're sent off and have to take the team for a meal um, within four weeks of a red card. Wow. <laughs> there's, a there's, there's some hefty fines, but they, 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 guys are on, they, they guys are on money. I, I, I remember one of the biggest fines I ever got was, well, actually Big Yogi let me off it. <laughs> I, I was at, we were at Falkirk, my playing Celtic in the League Cup at night game. And... So I travelled through to Falkirk with three boy, three guys and we met at the Red Deer at Cumbernauld. Oh yeah, yeah. Right, that's yeah, where we met, right? Yep. So that night, because we were playing at Parkhead, and I must have slipped my mind from meeting at the Black Bear, right? So I get, right? so I get my, I get my wires <laughs> crossed and my animals, right? So about quarter to six, I'm, I'm sitting at the, the Red Deer in Cumbernauld. Team buses know there. I'm like, these are late. My phone goes, Ross Wilson, who's now at Rangers, was, uh, was at Falkirk. Where are you? I says, I'm, I'm waiting the news, I'm at the Red Deer. I mean, you're joking. He says, we're at the Black Bear. <laughs> I heard Big Yogi roll and says, he's got 20 minutes to get a parking till he's fine now he's wages. <laughs> You've never seen somebody driving as fast in your life to get to Cumbernauld into parking. Yogi was going to find me a week's wages, but we beat Celtic on penalties 
in the quarter, I think it was a quarter final. We beat Celtic at Parkhead, and they came in the next day and went, You're lucky the boys won. Good. <laughs> Never find me. Yeah. Ruffy? Oh, the, the best one has to be Maka. Maka at Celtic. Uh, Big Billy had laid the rules that you had to be in the dressing room, stripped, ready to run along to Barrafield at 10 o'clock every morning. <laughs> And we'd all be sitting there at five to ten watching the clock because Mackie would be coming up for London, you know, after his weekend in London. We'd all be sitting there. And if he wouldn't make it, he got fined. And it, it got so bad that Mackie just walked in one day and just gave him a handful of money and went, Sorry, I'm late. <laughs> and just got to his game. <laughs> Did you ever get anything fined? No, you're, uh, you're too nice. No, no late. No. no. No, I was always there early. And well, Roy Keane famously left him at the when he was at Sunderland. Two of the boys were late for the team coach and just left. Left well, them. Honestly, I I, I, oh, kid, yeah. I oh. kid you not. Um, it was a pet hate. A lot of managers. Gordon people Strachan been late. tells a great story about that with uh, Alex McLeish and Mark McGee, yeah. um, who who nipped round the corner before the bus was leaving at Petodre for sweeties. <laughs> and Fergie came on, <laughs> and the, the driver, the bus driver at Aberdeen, said, "Gaffer, we just need to wait a minute." Big Eck and, and Dingus around the corner, they, they're getting sweeties out of the shop and he went, drive. And they left. <laughs> How can you leave your centre the forward and your centre half, Ruffy? The only person that can beat a story like that is Ian Andrews. It's <laughs> 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 too long to tell that story. I'll tell it tomorrow I'll anyway. It too long. Brilliant. Um, Ruffy in the days Brought of by a lot of bad memories oh, for Celtic oh, fans, aren't they? I know, I, I, no oh, wonder. God. I now realise why <laughs> he was a poor goalkeeper, because he <laughs> took the mickey out of him every day of his uh, life. Um, anyway. Oh, thoughts on the oh, poor guy. Absolutely. Apart from that, um, always good to get some football stories as well, and there'll be lots of special guests uh, coming up as well. Uh, hopefully with a bit of luck you'll be able to join us. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button, download the PLZ Soccer app, and you can look in the website as well. We also have the shop with some great legends t-shirts and prints uh, and every now and then you can get your hands on uh, one of those uh, maestro tops for training as well it's good to look hey looks good and outside you just wear, wear it outside as well it's fantastic i was going to wear one the other day i've got a red one i've got a green one i don't have a blue one or a black one but i'll wear the green one just to show it off yeah funny that um anyway apart from anything else thanks to <laughs> ruffy <laughs> thanks to tam uh thanks to everybody who reckons he's now looking like one of the musketeers tam but he's <laughs> he's sticking with this goatee beard he thinks that does the wife like it tam she doesn't like it no no, she doesn't like it. Well, yeah, but the rest of the birds yeah, like it. She was saying that. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, from Ruffy, from Tom, from myself, Peter Martin, we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for watching.